Bam. Hey, good morning. And uh, welcome back to Ward Wrestling Live. Uh, we have another amazing wrestling coach and mine in our country. Uh, we tried to do this on Monday, but right in the middle of our show, the fires hit and it was lights out. So uh, we reconvened, we set it up for today and uh, we got coach Hayden Elias back. Uh, he wrestled at Sac State for uh, Lee Camp was his coach. Uh, 2017 master senior qualifier a heavyweight state qualifier out there in California. Uh, as I mentioned, he did the JUCO scene, uh, top 12 in the state, and he's also coaching the middle school and the combat club. So, uh, hey, welcome back, man. Yeah, that kind of sucked that day, but uh, I hope everybody's all right out there in California, and, and uh, hopefully they can get this fire fought. Yeah, we're persevering through it. <clears throat> We've persevered through a lot of fires, and I know we can do it again. That's awesome, man. So I know, um, I know we were, uh, you know, initially we were discussing COVID out there. Um, you're out on the West Coast, California, large state. Um, what what effects has it had out there on all you guys and girls? And uh, and are our cities still locked down? Are they starting to open up? What's the call for schools? Uh, more of the bigger cities are on harsher lockdowns, like L.A. They, you can't leave unless it's essential. Here in Yuba City, we don't have a very big population. So we're pretty much open. So like you can go eat at a restaurant, but it has to be outside. Okay. So we're, we're pretty much, we're relaxing on ours since we don't have a lot of high infection rates going on here. Yeah, because then, you're, what are you, you're like north, northwest about, Northwest of uh, what is it? Is it Sacramento? Yeah, we're forty miles north of Sacramento. So you're more out, like in the deserty areas, the the mountainous areas, the rural. Areas. More of the mountainous farmland. Oh, good. So so there, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, it's the. Uh, I was watching something, and the other the other day I was watching some show, and they said, "Man, L.A. is just like." screwed up like I, they said that the, the homeless rates are going up the people are popping tents businesses are shutting down that's sad yep. and i know it's not just la but since we're talking about california i was i was listening to them say that and it's just sad to see that happening all over the country you know yeah it's we've had a few businesses shut down here it's it's hitting hard yeah man that sucks so uh you know you grew up there in yuba city uh Kind of a rural area, small. We spoke a little bit about uh, you've got what, what is it, the largest chic community in the country? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, are, we host the we host the largest Sikh parade festival in the country. Wow! And, and tell me, tell me about those. I know we were talking off the air last time, but I think on the air is better because that was really cool what you said. Uh, how how awesome are those parties, man? And and how welcoming are they to the community? Oh, it's awesome. You go in, you get free food, free drinks, whatever you want. Most of the time, you don't pay for anything. They're just, they're so caring. Like, last time during the, when we had the Oroville Dam evacuations and then the Paradise Fire evacuations, they were opening up their doors to everyone. It's wow. an awesome, amazing community. You know, they they just love to give. And, you know, it's it makes Yuba City what it is. Nice, man. Good party, good music, good parades. And, and yeah. how's the food? How's the food? Good food? Oh, food is amazing. It's always homemade, made from scratch. Wow. Is and it just, uh, like tandoori chicken and stuff like that? Yeah. And if you've never tried East Indian food, you it's I highly recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> a funny story. I remember my, my wife was in school and she had a, a friend that was from India. She was in school with her. And then, you know, we're like 23 years old or something, and they invite us over to their house. And um, I, as I know now, 20 years later, this is just how they do it, right? You, you show up and the kitchen is, looks like a buffet table, and it's just tins of food that they cook. Well, I walk up and I've never seen bright red chicken before. And I was like, what the hell is this? And they're like, just eat it. You'll like it. And I'm like, all right. And I started eating it, man. It was so good. But initially, when you look at it, you're like, holy shit, what is that? <laughs> but uh, when you start chowing it, it's good, man. Um, man, so pretty cool. So so you went to you went to Sac State. Uh, 
So, I mean, obviously it's very well known that the JUCO scene in California is very big, uh, a great wrestling scene and, and, and also for football too. I remember growing up <clears throat> and we would see a lot of kids go out there to the JUCO scene first and then kind of shoot off to some bigger schools. But um, man, talk about getting, so you walk into a room and you become a wrestler for Sac State and you walk in and there's Lee Kemp. I mean, what the hell is that like? That's gotta be like, do, do you like, are you like, holy shit, that's like one of the greatest people that ever live in our sport? He actually came in my sophomore year. So he came in just his past previous season he was hired on. But it was like kind of mind blowing to think one of the greatest minds American wrestling has ever seen. One of the few men to ever beat the Dan Gable was here coaching us, teaching us, you know, it's like, it's not something everyone gets to experience. And it was just mind shocking, like just listening to the wisdom he would give us. Yeah. And this is a guy that could probably pick up the phone and call any college in the country and they would welcome him to the room. Right. Yeah. And he's, he's hanging out in Sacramento with you guys. Um, I had the, uh, I had the pleasure of having him on. It just seems like a, such a really humble down to earth guy and just love caring, cares about the sport. So uh, any good, uh, any good stories in the room? I mean, at his age, was he still like kicking people's ass or what? Uh, none of us could keep <laughs> up with him. <laughs> he was uh, wild, huh? Yeah, just, he's so strong, so much stronger than he actually looks. He's just got, He's strong as is, and he gets that extra old man strength. And you're looking at him. Next thing you know, you're already flat on the ground. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, uh, so, so you did the JUCO scene, um, awesome. And, and now you're kind of back in Yuba City, back at back at home, and you're uh, you're coaching high school and middle school, right? Yes. How's that going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, this past season, the high school went on to finish their season. We actually had one of the best fem or women's teams in the state. Oh, wow. Uh, we had more girl state qualifiers than boys, if I remember correctly. And, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know. We first started growing a women's team, I think my senior year, junior, senior year, so 2016, 2017 era. And then this past season, they had a full lineup of girls. Wow. So it's really growing at a, at a rapid. And you guys are sanctioned out there, aren't you? Yes. Wow. So, um, man, what has it meant to, to wrestling in California to see these girls just erupt into the sport? You know, it's huge for us. You know, not only do these girls start they start bringing in more people more people come in their friends come in to watch them you know not only does that grow their sport get them more viewers it ends up getting the guys more viewers too because more people are coming to the dual meets to watch all of that because you know we're not big like buchanan or clovis our stadiums aren't packed but as of lately we're seeing more and more people of friends of these girls showing up and watching to go cheer them on so you know when you're typically just getting the guys parents friends small amounts of people now we're seeing bigger pack stadiums adding on this extra layer of teammates uh, all because of the girls yep man how cool is that uh i had a i had a real cool uh girl coach on yesterday i don't know if you saw her wore a bonnie and mm -hmm. uh man she was awesome she talked a lot of a lot about that and and um, it's it's good to see the 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 women really doing their thing, you know, and that's awesome. And what obviously for your program, it's meant a lot. And, and are you coaching both sides now, men and women? Yes. <clears throat> so um, now, do you do you keep them set? Like I've talked to some people, and they'll say, well, if we have a full women's team and a full men's team, we'll keep them separately, but we still one, two, three days a week. We want them to wrestle with each other because. Uh, they can really benefit from that. Is that something you guys do as well, or do you just do it every day that way? Uh, for Yuba City, Barry, and Combat, it's every day. Boys and girls wrestle with each other. Nice. That's awesome. Um, 
I think that's the way it's always been. Um, now as teams grow and get full teams, I'm sure uh, things will be different, but it's, um, it's good to see that happening. So I wrote down here that uh, <clears throat> you wrestled in the, uh, in the California kind of state um, championships. You went through, uh, you went through that kind of gauntlet, they call it, man, how, how tough is that? Is that California run, man? Cause from what I understand, you guys have, everybody meets at one place. There's not multiple champions. It's one champion per weight class, right? Yeah. You know, it's tough. Uh, when I got disqualified from masters, which is the step <coughs> right before state, um, it was my first time ever wrestling any like D1 level guys, D1, D2. Cause I was, I think I was a D4, D3 school for Yuba city back when I was in, but now it's like D2. Um, it was a tough experience getting my butt kicked by guys who I'd never seen before, you know, and it, it it's tough. I can, I can tell you that, you know? Yeah. I mean, and you're dealing with, you're dealing with like a hunt 75 ish guys per bracket. Wow, that's crazy. And, um, you know, we have three divisions, right? I think that's three regions, 1A, 3A, 5A, I think it is. Yeah, I could be totally crushing that, totally messing that up. But um, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot of kids, but I can't imagine having to go through a state that big to get to one one group of kids, right? So that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I know you were talking about women's wrestling in California. Um, has it grown into the colleges as well? Are you starting to see um, colleges, uh, or or has it always been there? I uh, it's starting to grow. We're seeing a few. Uh, this year is a lot bigger. There is um, quite a few girls showing up to a lot of our tournaments. Uh, Sac City is actually looking, has plans to look into making a women's team coming soon. So, you know, we're going to start, uh, hopefully you're going to start seeing a lot more of the JUCO schools bringing on women's wrestling. Because right now, I think I maybe saw at most a total of 15, 20 women wrestling for JUCO level here in California. Yeah, and definitely um, with that JUCO circuit, man. So t talk about what makes that JUCO circuit so, uh, so awesome, so amazing. Why it's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's created so many amazing wrestlers. How has California been able to really build that program and, and how important is it to, to wrestling in California and then just wrestling feeding our country and the colleges in our country? Well, you know, it kind of adds on to us being one of the big, like the biggest state in the country. So we get, we're going to have higher population of wrestlers and like me, I didn't have the grades to wrestle for four years. So I went into a Juco instead and you get a lot of these guys who are like D2, D1 level guys wrestling at Juco. And so it just ups the competition extremely. And, you know, it's super desirable because you're not because some guy from California is not gonna go to some Midwestern state just to wrestle for a JUCO team. You know they're gonna go there to wrestle for a four year, so they're all staying here, which keeps the competition here. Which I I think probably brings a lot of the out of state guys coming here looking for competition if they can't make it to the four year level yet. Yeah, we I, I know that um, I saw one of our local schools here flew out to uh, one of those big California tournaments this year. And uh, I was trying to watch them or keep up with them. And uh, a lot of tough, a lot of tough guys out there, they said, um, you know, especially like the Latino community out there, man, he said they are rock solid and they, they were fighting hard. Um, they said it was, it was really fun to, to get to experience that whole thing. So um, pretty, pretty cool. So, uh, you know, the middle school level, uh, what type of uh, what type adjustments do you have to make when you go from coaching the, the high school kids uh, to coming down to middle school? Are, are they uh, is it is it tough the transition or? or? Um, 
you just kind of got to slow your pace down. The middle school season for the school district, it's not very long. It's maybe a little over a month at most. And we're getting in new, we get new kids every year. So we have to start over with the basics again, going through all that. And usually we'll have the older kids. They'll move on. They'll go, I'll tell them, okay, you're going to do this, this, that. And they'll go practice that while we all watch the younger kids, making sure they're getting the basics all down and all of that. It's, you know, it's not really that hard because most, most of the kids, they're all pretty good. They listen pretty well. And so it, it's not too hard of a transition going from high school to middle or to middle school. So what, what are your goals, Hayden, or coach? Are, are your goals to, to, to stay and, and coach at the high school level and grow there and, and stay home? Are, are you looking to go back and compete again? Uh, do you have any, what, what, what are your, what does your future hold? I was originally going to go compete <clears throat> for Hastings College in Nebraska, but just with all of this going on and just injuries from wrestling, I decided, you know, maybe it's better for me to retire and start my life now. So I'm waiting on some medical records. I'm going into the National Guard part-time. And then I have my post exams, which is exams you take to get into law enforcement with the California Highway Patrol uh, in September. So I'm oh, preparing gosh. to do all of that. Nice, so looking to do some big things and uh... And that's pretty cool. And and will you uh, will you still try and stick with the coaching? So while you're at yeah. the National Guard or, or being a, a law enforcement, I know a lot of my father was a policeman and he also coached at the PAL and the Pop Warner. So I'm sure that you can do both, right? Yeah, wherever I get end up getting stationed, I'll probably just try and find a local high school there and try and work in my way with them and help coach with them. Now, does the, uh, can you, with the National Guard, that's Army, right? Yeah. So they have a, they have a, they have a program uh, that you can wrestle, I believe. I've yeah. had people on here that say they, uh, is it called, I think it's called WCAP, if you go through the Army. So um, have you looked into maybe doing that as well? Yeah, I've considered it. Uh, I have to wait and see how everything goes with medical records. It's been a pain trying to get it all. Sure. Uh, and I'm sure with your injuries and stuff, uh, it's really got to gotta make some adjustments, huh? Yeah. Well, cool. So um, let's go through the 10 questions. You ready? Yep. All right. I, I, I'm, I vaguely remember I might have had these wrong, but... Uh, Punjab grill or Indian grill? Uh, Punjab grill. All right. Uh, camps or clubs? Clubs. In and out or AJ's? In and out. Never heard of AJ's. <laughs> Me either, but it was on the list, so I wrote it down. <laughs> uh, a live go or a clinic? Uh, oof, that's a, that's a tough choice. I'm going to go live. Los Portales or Iguanas? Iguanas. <laughs> uh, off season, freestyle or Greco? Um, Greco. Silvio's Pizza or Pops? Never heard of either, but let's go with Silvio's. Oh, well, that makes two of us. All right, do you prefer duels or IBTs? Duels. Red Burr Brewing or Flatland Brewing? Uh, Flatland Brewing. Oh, you heard of the beer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just turned 21 in July, so I've been I've been learning my beers and stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then I uh, here's a funny one: California raisins or California pizza? <laughs> uh, I, I I'm gonna have to go with raisins. I mean, we we grow them here. We 
we grow raisins here. We make raisins here. We have a production factory here in Yuba City. So you smell them a lot. And that's oh, interesting. To. I had no idea when I made the question up. I just wanted to know if the raisins still dance. When we were kids, the California raisins danced on the commercials. <laughs> yeah, we have it's sun. It's a sun sweet factory, so and they produce like prunes, raisins, and all of that. So you can always smell it. Okay, is it like uh, like we can go to like apple orchards, orange orange orchards, whatever? Can you can you like go up and and get like raisins that are just coming out? Well, they're actually grapes. They're turned into raisins, but we have I believe we have a couple vineyards here in the Yuba Center area. Oh, real cool. Look at that. So raisins are shriveled up grapes. Yeah, we're actually one of the largest suppliers of rice to China and then one of the largest supplier to peaches to the country. Ah, go Yuba City. Oh, look what I learned on my wrestling show. Well, I've got something interesting for you. We have the smallest mountain range in the world. And we also have Cold War era nuclear missile silos. <laughs> How cool is that? I would have never, you know what? I never even would have known Yuba City existed if, if I didn't meet you. And uh, I, I challenge anybody out there to tell me they knew where Yuba City was before you saw this show. <laughs> if you and don't have reasons. And then our Air Force Base right next to us, Beale Air Force Base, is the first line of defense for the West Coast. Really? So you guys are just kind of chilling right there. Yeah. They got you protected. That's pretty cool. Oh, man. Hey, you know, I'm sorry we totally kiboshed the first session, but um, we got our 20 minutes back and we did it. We did our thing and um, it was super cool. Do you still stay in touch with um, Coach Kemp at all? Uh, he's harder to get in contact with too it's i more usually keep in contact with our head coach marcus gales nice well hey i'd love to have him on man you should shoot him out my link and uh see if he wants to come on i've had i think i've had one only one or two uh juco coaches on i'd love to have more i'd love to talk to someone like him who's you know really deep into that community and, and see what makes that I mean, everybody talks about wanting to have a circuit in their state like California does with JUCOs. Um, I talked to a, a club coach here, a college club coach. What is it? NCWA. And, uh, oh, yeah. And he said, uh, man, he would love to, to get a JUCO circuit here like the one in California. And I, I think a state like we have, it, it would help us get to um, – we, we don't have a D1 school, right? We, we – we have, I mean, we have D1 schools. We don't have a D1 wrestling program. And, and I think a lot of the goals that the coaches and people have is to get, get one in Florida. And I think that would really help keep a lot of kids here uh, instead of traveling abroad, right? So um, it'd be nice to have, but uh, we'll see where it goes. But man, this was really cool. Um, I know it's early out there, so I, I appreciate you getting up and hanging out with me. And, uh, you know, God bless all the people going through the fires out there, man. Uh, I hope everybody uh, gets through and, man, keep kicking life's ass, man. And, and National Guard, uh, California Highway Patrol, you're going to get those big those big um, glasses like chips and like <laughs> oh, the aviators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd be brooming the aviators like uh, the old CHP uh, the TV show. That'll be awesome. Well, hey, man. It was an honor again. Anybody that ever comes on my show, I just appreciate you so much and, and keep doing big things. And I'm, I'm so happy, uh, I, you know, wrestling has done a lot for you, huh? Yeah, you know, actually, I was a troublemaker kid. I wasn't expected to do a whole lot with anything. And one of my wrestling coaches back in high school is actually probably one of the biggest reasons I actually got my life back on track. So, you know, I really owe it to the sport. Oh, cheers. I'm glad I asked that question. I, I drink coffee, um, but there's no Bailey's Irish cream in it. And Bailey's <laughs> always makes coffee better. But I don't know. I mean, I see Joe Rogan drinking alcohol on his show. I wonder if that's something that I guess it's my show. I can do what I want, right? I mean, yeah, you're stuck at home. No one can really stop you. <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's funny. 
All right, someone send me Baileys. We'll be drinking Baileys and coffee. Peace, my brother. Enjoy the California raisins. Will do. It was good talking with you. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming back on.